Panorama TV presents How They Do That, where we explore the world of professional photographers and share their techniques with you. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Well, welcome to another episode of How'd They Do That? I'm Mark Wallace. Well, today on the show, we have Sarah Petty. She's a photographer who specializes in fine art portraits of children, families, seniors, and pets. She's also the founder of The Joy of Marketing. So thanks so much for joining us today, Sarah. Oh my gosh, thanks for having me. Well, you bet. Well, can you tell our viewers a little bit about your photography and your approach to photography? We specialize in kids. That's always been my passion and I did not exist in photos as a child. <laughs> I have the best parents, but for whatever reason, I had a brother that was two years older than me who kept them very busy. So there are no photos of me. And so when people ask, do your kids look like you? I always say, hmm, I don't know. So I'm kind of on a mission to help all the kids in the world be celebrated in fine art photography with images mostly of them alone. I do do groups, I do do families, but my passion is one child at a time, beautiful framed heirloom photography. Well, tell us a little bit about your style of photography. You shoot both on location and in the studio. Do you have a, a preference between one over the other? I'm busted because truly I, I used to shoot outdoor a lot more, but then once I got a studio, I found that I absolutely love being in the studio. Um, I think with the high school kids, we definitely go outside a lot, but with the little kids, I just, I have a system in the studio where I know what they're going to do. I know what they will respond to, and I can control the environment to control the magic that happens. So my lights all mount to the ceiling. We can spin and shoot on all four walls of the camera room. We have a spinny chair. We have a treasure chest. We have all of these kind of magic things for the kids, little trampoline that they can sit on. So I really feel like I have a lot of control in this studio and I can get really magical images when I have them in this defined space. So I would say I'm probably 80% studio. Well, I totally agree. I'm a control freak myself, so I love being in the studio. Well, tell us about the equipment that you use while you're in the studio, what kind of uh, flashes and modifiers and things like that. So talk to us about that. Okay, I shoot with the Canon, the 5D Mark II. It's really our workhorse. Um, I have several lenses, but I, I find I, I tend to stay with the, um, the 70 to 200, 28, have an 85, 1, 2, and 100, um, 2, 8. And um, for me, um, gosh, I really, I'm so focused on the subject and making that connection that it's hard to stop four times during a session to change lenses and to change settings and all those things. Definitely with the high school kids, it's another game. But since so much of what I do and my passion is with the kids and babies, we do that planning session up front so that I know what I'm shooting, I know the look I'm going for, and I know the lens that I use. And then that's pretty much what I stay with. Typically in the studio, however, at the end of the session, I do, um, I have them bring in bright, fun colors, which is non-traditional for photographers, maybe stripes or patterns, flowers, and um, we'll put them in behind the ring light. So we have this giant ring light that we shoot through, put them up against the bright colored paper. So you'll see a lot of those things in my portfolio and on my website at sarahpetty.com. And that's what we've done. So it puts that circle, sh circle in their eye the catch light, and then it puts that cool shadow behind them. So it makes really fun artwork, either on a metal mural or a big canvas. The ring flash is Larson Enterprises, and it's not inexpensive. So it's kind of big and bulky. It's on, it's like a tripod, it's on a big stand. And gosh, the opening's probably eight to 10 inches. But I just prefer it to the ones that mount on the camera. And granted, I haven't tried many of them, but I really love the look that this creates. So. It's hard to find room to store it, but I really, really like how it looks in the images. Yeah, well, we use a Profoto ring flash here in our studio, and it, you know, it really does give you that Saturday Night Live celebrity guest host look. Uh, you know, it's, you just can't go wrong with a ring flash. No, and it's it's unexpected, fun, uh, kids' room art. That's something that I really love is creating art for kids' rooms. So you get kids laughing and sticking out their tongue and thumbs up and peace and hearts and things like that. 
you put them in a series or you have one really great one and you can do it huge and it's just one of the funnest things a kid will have in their room something they can enjoy for years and years and years. Well, there's another question I have to ask you. You do uh, shoot a lot of groups in your studio, groups like of five people or more. And a lot of the people that watch our show want to know how to shoot groups in a studio. So do you have any secrets you can share for lighting groups in a studio? I have a four by six soft box that I love. I use a couple reflectors and I keep my lighting really pretty simple. So I, I light pretty broad for the group. And something we've been doing in the last couple years is doing more of a high key where we're blowing out the background. We've got a lot, a lot of light bouncing back. And then for me, I want emotion and I want them engaging with each other. So we might put half of the family on one side of the room and half of the family on the other and have them run together and crash. Or if there's a little child in the family and the rest of them are older, we might pass, um, have the end person pick up the child and pass them down the row. I want them laughing, looking at each other and engaging. So for me, you have to, because everyone's moving and there's action happening, I have to be careful not to light everything in a specific way. Whereas, you know, a photographer that's posing everyone perfectly, they can use more lights and be more detailed. But for me, it's more about that emotion and having everyone engage and having fun. That's what I try to shoot for when I shoot families. Well, and you do it very well. Well, speaking about joy and fun, tell us about the joy of marketing. How did that come to be? Can you tell us a little bit about that? So my background is actually in business and marketing. I have my MBA and I worked at an advertising agency. And so when I got pregnant with my twins in 2000, I, it was really hard to get back into that because I was crazy year. Anyway, I kind of opened my studio for fun and it took off. So I did a lot of marketing pieces that had a lot of bells and whistles, things that people could engage with. So things that open or they twist or they spin. And so I really built kind of this boutique business model where I didn't want to focus on being the least expensive and I didn't want to have to discount. So I was able to attract buyers at the top who are less price sensitive and they really engage with our brand and we can spend more time with them in the consultation. We can go to their home and we can plan their walls and their artwork and all of this heirloom um, artwork that we're creating for them. So I started speaking to photographers and, and helping others and it just took off. So there was this huge demand for people that needed help with the marketing because as you know, even though you're a photographer, you really spend most of your time running your small business, figuring out how to price and what products to offer and how to sell to people and, and gosh, how to make the phone ring through marketing and promotion. So I was traveling a lot speaking and I found, okay, I have these three little kids and I need to find a way to, to help others without leaving home so much. So we have a whole team dedicated to creating really cool products at the joy of marketing. We have a monthly membership program called cafe joy, where we send audio education and these cool marketing ideas every month. We do a lot of free events at the joy of marketing and have a lot of free resources. We have a free ebook. We have 10 free days of marketing strategies and things like that. So people can start focusing on working on their business as much as they're working in their business, because we know that's what people need to succeed as a photographer in this very competitive environment. So if I became a member of the joy of marketing, what kinds of things would I expect to see every single month as a member? It kind of rotates. Every quarter we bring in an expert. So maybe someone who's an expert on SEO or someone who's an expert on customer service or customer loyalty or things like that from outside the photography industry. Many of them are top publishers. We've had some really great people like um, John Jantz who wrote duct tape marketing and people like that. And then we also provide a lot of information ourselves. Like one month might be an audio where we're talking about how to cross sell and upsell your clients or how to attract non-price sensitive buyers, more of an upscale consumer. And then every third month, we come in with a cool marketing and promotional piece. So we're kind of showing what we do at my studio, and we'll include the graphics and the design elements so that people can work with their designer or they can tweak these layered files to create promotional and marketing pieces to run their business. Sometimes you know we throw in bag tags or different things like that, but we know 
that it's a lot more than just sending postcards to your clients. So it's about education. It's not small business in a box. You have to listen, you have to read, you have to learn and invest in separating yourself from the competition. And you know, on a side note, I'm not a big person that gets caught up in all the competition because I am a real believer that you succeed or fail based on what you do in your business. We can all go around saying, well, my competitor does this or my competitor does that. But if you're doing things based on your strengths and you understand cost of sales and how to sell and how to run a great business and you're a great photographer, you will succeed. Maybe your competitors will succeed. Maybe they will fail. That's not really relevant. We want to encourage people to work on their business based on what's best for them. Well, Sarah, we're out of time. One more time, can you please tell us where we can find everything about the joy of marketing and more about your photography? So my photography is at sarahpetty.com and sarahpettyseniors.com. And the joy of marketing has a the in it, thejoyofmarketing.com. And we have a lot of resources there. So I hope people can take advantage and start making a commitment to learning how to run a successful business. Definitely photography skills are huge and that's something we are always working on as well. But you have to be working on the business side at the same time so that you can make money doing what you love. Awesome. Well, thank you again for joining us today, Sarah. It was a real pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. This has been an absolute blast. Well, you bet. Well, there you have it. Sarah Petty, a phenomenal photographer, and please visit her sites to see more of her work and learn more about the joy of marketing. Well, if you have somebody that you'd like to see on how they do that, please send your suggestion to me at askmark at adorama.com. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you again next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.